All right, good day, good morning, good evening, good night to you, wherever and whenever you're watching me. This is your brother and friend, Maurice, and what are we going to talk about this time around? Well, we have come to the final video in our series concerning the rapture and how the modern church has been left behind. And you're watching the New Cosmos videocast. This is the New Cosmos videocast. You've never heard it like this anywhere. So welcome and this is the sixth and final video in our series concerning the rapture and how the modern church has been left behind. So we saw in our last video that these children of disobedience were fighting against Michael and his angels, also known as Jesus and his remnant. So the dragon, the adversarial system, this adversarial system, according to Revelation 12, 9, was removed from the air. <laughs> it was cast out of heaven from its spiritual authority over God's people. It was cast out and cast down. Now, when we read in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, which says that the people of God, the living saints at that time, were now caught up into the air, into the same realm where the dragon had been cast out from. <laughs> so he was no longer the prince of that air anymore. The people of God are now the princes of that air. <laughs> right? So the Lord was about to translate the remnant into the air. In other words, he was bringing them into the land which he had conquered from the enemy. The land which he had just thrown out the enemy from. <laughs> he was now giving it to his people. This was the promised land. Okay? In spiritual terms. He was giving them the kingdom which he had taken from Old Covenant Israel and placing his remnant in a position of favor and authority in the air, the earth's spiritual atmosphere. Now remember in our previous study where we, where we, where we looked at the trump of God and we saw that the trump of God hearkened back to the defeat of the city of Jericho. Remember that? Or if you haven't, if you don't, maybe you didn't see, go back and watch the previous study, okay? Talking about the trump of God. But however, we saw um, when Israel entered the, the, the promised land, the first thing they did under the, under the leadership of, of Joshua and Michael, more I should say under Michael leading Israel with Joshua as its, you know, the earthly commander, but uh, Michael was the heavenly commander of the people of God as the army of God, the first thing they did was to conquer the city of Jericho, which were the enemies of God. And at the seventh and last trump, the city was defeated. And it says there that the people of God ascended into that city, right? Which indicated them now being victorious over the enemies of God, okay? The position of the air relative to the earth is significant because air is above the earth, okay? The earth is below the air. And this symbolically signifies dominance and authority. Whatever is above is dominant. Whatever is above has authority, okay? So even the position, the location of air relative to earth implies dominance and authority so to meet the lord in the air up implies an ascending up 
as I said, which is which gives the picture of conquering one's enemy. As when the city of Jericho was defeated as the la- at the last trump, the people of God ascended up into the city. Let's look at Joshua chapter 6 verse 20. All right, Joshua chapter 6 verse 20 to see that. Joshua chapter 6 verse 20. And we, 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 we looked at the story um, in our last study, but I just want to bring this point. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. This will be the seventh trump, the last trump. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. The city was defeated. So that the people did what now? Went up. <laughs> they went up. Up into the city. Okay? So notice, Michael, the heavenly commander, gave them the victory because he told Joshua how to defeat the city. He says, as commander of the Lord's army or of the Lord's host, am I now come? So he was really the commander of the Lord's army, which were Israel. Right? And when he gave them the battle plan, they followed the battle plan, the walls fell down. And they went up, they ascended up, just like in First Thessalonians 4, 17, it says they were caught up <laughs> into the air, right? So you remember the air was where the enemy was operating. The prince of the power of the air was operating there. Christ defeated him and casted him out in Revelation 12, 9. Good? And now... The remnant now are going to ascend into the air, which is the the land, the spiritual land, which had previously been occupied by the enemies of God, is now occupied by the remnant or the people of God. (laughs) All right? That might be a bit too heavy for some of us, eh? But this is, this is where God's people need to be today. This is where we need to be operating. This is where we need to understand we are to be. And when we start to function in that realm as we should, a lot of the nonsense what is happening on the earth today wouldn't be happening. Because we would come into the reality of what Christ said. Whatever you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. In other words, things have to be bound in the air first. They ha- whatever you have bound on earth would have already been bound in heaven, meaning in the air. So in other words, you have to start fighting in the air first if you want to see results on the earth. <laughs> All right? Good? The position of the air is the position of dominance and authority. And the, that is where God snatched up, raptured the living saints into the air. <laughs> okay? So the Lord, what Paul was saying in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, the Lord was about to bring his saints, his living saints, the saints on the earth. He was about to bring them into the realm of the air which before had been dominated by the spirit of disobedience, the prince of the power of the air, the enemy of God. Right? But Christ had obtained the victory there in the air. (laughs) And now when he had obtained that victory in the air, now the saints would also now occupy that land. Okay? So believers would obtain the spiritual authority to effect positive changes on the earth because all things begin first in the air, in the spirit, then they manifest in the natural. Okay? Look at Romans 16 verse 20. Romans 16 verse 20. It says there, and the God, Paul speaking to the the, the church at Rome, he said, the God of peace shall bruise Satan, the adversary, okay? He shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly, (laughs) okay? So Satan was to be removed from the air 
and placed under. You notice the position? How is he going to be placed under? Because the saints are going to take his location where he was in the air and he was to be relegated to the earth. That means his, that symbolically means, well, whatever power and authority he had was, rem was going to be removed. And the saints were now going to have the authority. Okay? That's, that's the symbol of being under the feet. Under the feet means you are now subject to. And the one who is standing above is the one who now has the authority. Okay? So the believers would now, were to now be in a position to move from physical battles such as David and Joshua and the other mighty men of God fought. Samson and these men fought physical battles. But the saints of God were, would soon be placed in a position where they could fight in the spirit. <laughs> in the air. <laughs> Effecting real change. So meeting the Lord in the air was not about escaping the earth. But it was about entering into the restored dominion which Adam had lost. It was about partaking in Christ's comprehensive victory in that realm. Okay? Now, another word we need to look at is the word that the apostle chose for the meeting of the Lord in the air. Okay? The word meet, as is used in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Let's go back there. Where it says... Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, in clouds, to meet. This word meet is a, is a special word. Okay? It's the word apantesis. Okay? And let us look at how Paul used this word in Acts chapter 28, verse 14 to 16. Acts chapter 28, verse 14 to 16. Okay? Let's look at how Paul used this word, right? Because this word carries with it a meaning of not just meeting somebody, but it is more in the case of an official meeting where, for example, in those days, you would have a dignitary, um, a king or someone of high rank coming to visit a city, right? And when... The, the king or the whatever dignitary it was, remember they, they traveled in chariots and so on in those days, so you could basically see them coming a, a long way off, okay? So when they came in sight of the city, then they would send out a delegation from the city to go and meet that dignitary a long way off before he actually came to the city, okay? So in other words, that, that the apanthesis meeting is where the, where the people of the city go out from the city to meet the dignitary. So the meeting does not occur in the city. It occurs out of the city, right? And then the, 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 the delegation and the dignitary come together into the city. So basically the delegation escorts the dignitary into the city. But the meeting occurs outside of the city. <laughs> okay? So, let's look at an example, in, as I said, in Acts chapter 28, verse 14, where a delegation was sent out from Rome to meet Paul at his arrival there. Okay? It says, Where we found brothers and were desired to tarry with them seven days, so we went toward Rome. Okay? So they were traveling to Rome. And from there, when the brothers heard from Rome, when the brothers heard of us, they came to meet us as far as a, a P forum. So notice, these brethren left Rome to cope. They leave the city of Rome and they traveled out of Rome to meet um, Paul and his delegation. And they traveled, it says, they traveled as far as the Api Forum. Now, I don't know how far that is from Rome, right? But it, it implies that they did not wait until Paul arrived at Rome to greet him. They instead went 
out of the city to meet him. Okay, so the apentesis meeting, as I said, is one which occurs outside of the city. <laughs> okay, and then it escorts the dignitary into the city, right? So now if we apply that, the apentesis, to 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, which, where it is actually used there, the apentesis meeting, right? Let's come back here now. We know we would see that the the living saints which we are alive and remain, okay, so the living saints at, at the time of Thessalon in, in the time of the Thessalonian church and the early apostolic church, who would be alive to witness the parousia event, okay, they would be snatched up together with the resurrected saints in the body of Christ, in the cloud, right? And they would be snatched up to meet the Lord in the air. Remember, the apantesis meeting now means that they would be taken out of their city. They would leave their city and they would meet Christ and they would meet him where? In the air. So which means their city would have been the earthly realm. Okay? That was the, 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 the old covenant realm, the realm of the flesh. Okay? And they, ha they were now snatched out of the earthly realm and they were now meeting Christ in the spirit realm. <laughs> okay? So that means that the, that the old covenant, the flesh covenant had ended. All the, 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 the ceremonies and the sacrifices and the, and the flesh sacrifices and all of these things. The, these earthly symbols had ended and now the spiritual reality had come. So they were trans, they were snatched from the fleshly and the earthly and the physical into the spiritual. As Paul says, the, they are ministers of the new covenant, not according to the letter, but according to the spirit. Okay? So the spirit had come. Good? That spirit kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Right? So they were snatched out of their earthly Jerusalem and they were meeting Christ in the new Jerusalem. They were apanticing Christ in the new Jerusalem. Meeting Christ in the air, the realm of the spirit, indicating that this was, again, this was not a, a visible meeting <laughs> because it was happening in the air. The air is the, is the invisible spiritual realm. <laughs> okay? And it was at that time they would be delivered completely from the Sinai Covenant claims. The saints met the Lord in the air, the heavenly realm from which Christ had cast out Satan and his angels. This indicates that Satan and death no longer reigned over God's people. But Christ and life now reigned. And so Paul was writing to comfort the Thessalonians and the early apostolic believers that their translation into the kingdom of heaven, the new Jerusalem, would also herald Satan's comprehensive defeat at the hands of Michael the archangel. The commander of the Lord's hosts, who were now the born again people of God. And so we will look at point number 18 when I come back. Right, so we are ready to look at point number 18 and point number 18 says the rapture inaugurated the Lord's indwelling presence in the believer the rapture inaugurated the Lord's indwelling presence in the believer and our text there are 1 Thessalonians 4 
16 and 17, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, 20 to 21 and 23. Matthew chapter 16, verses 20 to 27, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 55, Hosea 13, verse 14, John 5, verse 24. And we are looking at our main text, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. So let's get back there. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. It says there, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We looked at that in our previous point. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And we are going to concentrate in this point. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Now this harkens back to Christ's promise in John chapter 14. So we're going to jump to John chapter 14. And read from verse 1, it says there in the, uh, that's John chapter 14, right? It says there, let not your heart, Christ speaking to his disciples, it is his 11 disciples at, the, at that time, because Judas had gone out. Let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, this place was not a literal bricks and mortar place. It was their position in Christ, which would allow them now to be sons of God, which would allow them to come into that oneness relationship with the Father through Christ. Okay, that was the place. And he says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. This is 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also. Okay. Where was Christ? Christ was in the Father. <laughs> so he wanted where he was in the Father, his disciples, and by extension believers in Christ, to be in the Father also. Okay. Now, yes, at the day of Pentecost, Christ came in the Spirit, right? But here, this 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 we had Christ coming to bring the presence of the Father, which was eternal life, <laughs> okay, to the um, to the believers, okay, who were alive at that time. And by extension, by inaugurating that, it would now be open for all be all subsequent believers. So, let's look at verse twenty-one. So Christ promised to be to come so that where He was. His disciples would be good so that would indicate he, he would come he was coming so that they could be one good let's look at verse 21 as I said verse 21 says he that has my commandments and keeps them he it is that loves me and he that loves me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him here's the here's the coming of Christ on the day of Pentecost right manifested himself to his disciples as the the, the flames of fire, the tongues of fire, and so on, and the spirit within. Good? But, but then we have another one in verse 23. It says here, Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we. Now here's the coming of the Father and the Son. Okay? And we know the Father brings eternal life. Okay? We will come to him and make our stay, our, our abode, our dwelling with him. So the coming of Christ was not to snatch <laughs> the disciples or the living saints off the earth. It was a coming to bring the presence of the Father with them and to stay with them. <laughs> okay? That was that was what that coming. So even the the the, the, the um the the teaching of the rapture is that the saints would be snatched off the earth and taken to heaven. That's not what 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 is saying. That's not what John 14 is saying. John 14 is saying Christ would come and bring the presence of the Father to be with the living saint on the earth. <laughs> That's what it's saying. And uh, Revelation says the same thing. Revelation 20 says the new Jerusalem would descend from heaven. 
<laughs> it didn't say the New Jerusalem will ascend up into heaven. It said the New Jerusalem as descends, comes down from heaven to meet the believer. Good? So that's what we see in First in Thessalonians 4, 17. The descent of the relationship between God and man coming down, being made accessible to those who are living in the realm of the earth. So when Paul says in, let's go back in um, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, when he says, and so shall we be, the word so means in this way. Okay? Let's look at it in our lexicon. Okay? Notice it's the word huto or hutos means in this way. Can you see it? It says in this way. <laughs> right? In which way? By the Lord coming down to meet us where we are. In that way will we ever be with the Lord. <laughs> okay. So all Paul was saying in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, we get back our Bible, all he was saying is that in this way, right? Here we are. So in this way, how? By him descending, and snatching us up into the realm of the air, meaning bringing us into the spirit realm where he is, <laughs> in that way, the Lord will always be present with us. Okay? Present with the living believer. So, moving from the earthly identity into the heavenly identity, moving from the earthly kingdom to the heavenly kingdom <clears throat> does not require a physical relocation. It doesn't require the person to ascend bodily off the earth, the surface of the earth, because it does not happen in the physical or the natural. It happens in the spirit realm. Okay? It's a covenantal relocation. It's a covenantal, it's a spiritual relocation. It's a spiritual relocation relationship it's a relationship that happens in the spirit realm okay so paul in first thessalonians 4 verse 17 is saying that the clouds of living saints were about to be gathered into the new jerusalem the city which came down from heaven the relationship between god and man which came down from heaven not by them relocating bodily or physically but covenantally and spiritually. Since the new Jerusalem, as according to Luke chapter 17, verse 21, was an internal relationship with the Father through Christ. <laughs> so it is not my understanding, nor I do not believe it's the teaching of the apostles, that the waiting saints on earth in the time of the Thessalonians were to be removed from the earth. And this is what the rapture doctrine teaches okay that the saints would would be removed from the earth some secretly that's a secret rapture or with the mainstream doctrine is that they will be removed and everybody else remaining will just be slaughtered <laughs> okay however according to the apostolic teaching the rapture was 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 not to prevent the saints from physical biological death it was to give them eternal life and immortality and incorruptibility within it was an internal kingdom why can i say that because jesus in matthew 16 verse 26 and 27 promised his his um disciples that after they had seen him come in his kingdom they would subsequently still taste natural death. <laughs> All right? So Jesus promised that after the rapture, his people would still taste natural death, which means the rapture was all about the spirit internal. Okay? And so the, the immortality, the incorruptibility which they gained at the rapture was internal. 
Let's look at Matthew 16, verse 26 to 27, which I just mentioned there just to um, emphasize that point a little bit because I know this might be very strange to you. But we are going by what Christ said. <laughs> okay? We are going by what Christ said. It says, for this, this is Christ speaking, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Okay? Then he shall reward every man according to his works. Truly I say to you, meaning to the persons who were, he was speaking to, the, the real people who he was talking to, not me and you, but the people who were standing there listening to him, he said to them, there be some standing here, some standing there listening to him, which shall not taste of death. Now, that was not a complete statement because it was qualified. He said, they will not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, which, which basically is saying, after you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, then subsequently you will taste death. But until you see that, you will not taste death. <laughs> okay? You will be preserved alive to see the Son, the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And then after that, you can subsequently taste death. So which means the death that Christ cured or healed was not the death of the body. It was the death of the soul. That was what Christ secured the healing or the eternal life for. The eternal life is of the soul, not of the body. Good? So after these same saints who Paul talked about being alive and remain to the coming of the Lord, after they were caught up in the air, into the body of Christ, into the new Jerusalem, <laughs> Right? It doesn't mean that they were snatched off to the earth and taken into the heavens. No, they were translated covenantally and spiritually from the kingdom of the earth to the kingdom of heaven. They were made citizens of the kingdom. And then they were given the authority to exercise in the air, the spiritual realm that is restricted to the earth okay and so christ says whatever you bind on heaven in earth would have already been bound in heaven in the air the spirit realm so you got to start operating there if you want to see results on the earth so <laughs> so once christ came to them it meant he brought the presence of the father to them because remember in revelation it says when the new Jerusalem came down, it was God dwelling with man. Okay? So he brought the presence of the Father down. He brought eternal life down to give them. So that when they would taste death, only their mortal bodies would perish. But they, or you might say their soul, would continue on in the spirit with the Lord because they had been joined to the Lord and had become one spirit. So now we know that Jesus had promised immortality and incorruptibility to the faithful who had died and as well as those who, who had been alive and believed in him. But this immortality and incorruptibility was not about the flesh body. It was about the soul. And so at the rapture, the promise of immortality and incorruptibility was, would be fulfilled as both groups, those who had been taken out of Hades and those who were alive and remained, they would be brought into the presence of God and receive from him immortality and incorruptibility. And it's found in 1 Corinthians 15. Let's jump there. 1 Corinthians 15. I believe this should be a well-known text. Verse 51. It says there, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. The saints of God, at the time of the Corinthians, Paul was saying to the Corinthian church, We shall not sleep. We shall not all taste death. That's what he's saying. But we shall all be changed, whether we have tasted death 
or we are alive at the coming of the Lord, they would all go through a transformation. Now, that transformation was not of the body <laughs> because those who were sleeping, they did not have a body to transform. Their body was perished. Their body had rotted. Their body was in the, in the, in the earth and it was returning to the dust of the earth. So the change could not have been of their flesh body. Okay? So the change had to be a spiritual change, a change of the spirit, of the soul, however you want to put it, but not of mortal flesh bodies. Good? He says, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, this is the snatching, this is the harpazo. Remember the harpazo is instantly being, going from one kingdom to the other, one state to the other, from old covenant to new covenant, from the reign of death to the reign of life, instantly, right? In the twinkling of the eye at the last trump. You remember the last trump indicates the victory over the enemies of God. <laughs> right? That means the, 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 the prince of the power of the air was cast out. Now, the, the, the saints of God are going to be given that realm. Okay? Authority in that realm. The trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. That's the same thing 1 Thessalonians 4.16 talks about. And we shall be changed. And here he talks about the here he talks about the change. He says, For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Now a lot of people assume that the corruptible means the physical body. <laughs> but the corruptible is the soul. Right? It is the soul of man which was corrupted. It's the spirit of man. That has been corrupted. Okay? So let's just imagine that this was all about changing the physical body. If you got a new body, but your spirit was still corrupted, it made no sense. <laughs> okay? The problem is not the body. The problem is you. <laughs> okay? You need to go through a new birth. You need to change. You need to be changed. You need to be born of the spirit. Okay? Not born of the flesh again. <laughs> born of the flesh is, is not going to solve the problem. You need to be born of the spirit. It is the spirit of man that was corrupted. Okay? So that corrupted spirit must change and put on incorruption. Now, this is an attribute of the father. So for this to happen, the Father and your spirit have to unite. You and the Father have to unite. And then you can receive the incorruption of the Father. And again, this mortal, again, this does not mean the body, the mortal body. Because the spirit was, is corrupt, it's mortal also. <laughs> the Bible says the soul that sin, it shall die. <laughs> okay? So mortality is not just of the physical body. Mortality is of the soul. Jesus says, Fear not him that can kill the body, but do nothing to the soul. But fear him who can kill both body and soul. So the soul is also mortal. <laughs> right? So the mortality here applies to the soul, the inner man. He... That inner person, that inner being, that inner aspect, the spirit aspect of man, not the physical, would put on immortality again because it is brought into connection with the Father. Okay? So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall brought, be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in what? Victory. Here's the victory again. The ascending up. The defeating of the enemies of God. As when the last trump Jericho was defeated. <laughs> Alright. O death, where is thy sting? O grave. Now here is where the, the King James throws everybody off. Because the word here in the Greek is not grave at all. It is the word Hades. Let's see the modern literal version. It says, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, you see? Not the grave. 
The grave is where the physical body goes. That has nothing to do with resurrection. That has nothing to do with immortality. That has nothing to do with um, eternal life nor incorruptibility. That perishes and it returns to the earth and turns to dust. <laughs> right? It is Hades, the realm of the, where the soul went. That is where the, the victory occurred. Snatching, them, snatching the, those who were there out of that into eternal life. And those who were alive and remained, they brought them up and gave them authority in the realm of the air. <laughs> All right? And so what Paul actually was quoting here is Hosea 13 verse 14. Let me put it back in the King James and let's go to Hosea 13 verse 14. Okay? Hosea 13 verse 14. It says there, I will ransom, speaking of Israel, the remnant, I will ransom them for the power of the grave. Again, the King James uses the word grave. But when, if, 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 we, if we go to the English Standard Version here, it says, Shall I ransom them from the power of Sheol? Now, Sheol is the Hebrew rendition of Hades, which is all the same, speaking of the same place of where the, where the souls went at death. Okay, but Christ obtained the victory. He says he has the he had the keys of death and Hades. <laughs> right? We dealt with this already in in previous studies. Right? So we see that the the immortality and the incorruptibility was not about the body, physical body, but it was of the soul. Okay. So for the saints on earth. At the time of Paul, at the time of the Thessalonians, they were still, they were still, even after the, the, the rapture, they were still in their mortal biological bodies. However, it was their spirits which, or their soul which would be made immortal and incorruptible at the rapture. In other words, that immortality and that incorruptibility would be an internal change. Now, this should not be strange because Jesus himself, even though he had a mortal biological body, he was himself incorruptible and immortal. <laughs> okay? So, it shouldn't be anything strange that the saints would have the same thing happen to them because Jesus was their prototype. Okay? So, whatever God accomplished in Christ was so that he can accomplish for all sons of men who are in Christ. Good? So just like how Christ had a mortal biological body, but internally he had the Father dwelling, so therefore internally he was incorruptible and immortal, it shows us that eternal life is not tied to a physical body. <laughs> it is the inner man that receives the incorruptibility and the immortality. So for those living saints... And the good news is, as well, for all those who are living in this new world, in this new time, when we are in Christ, when our biological bodies die, when we taste death, we still retain the immortality and the incorruptibility because that is an internal change. Our spirit had been joined to the Lord. So they would and we would forever be with him. Okay? That's what Paul said. In this way, we shall ever be with the Lord. In which way? By being joined to him internally by his presence inside us. Right? So this, would, this is what Jesus was speaking about in John chapter 5 verse 24. Let's go down there quickly. John chapter 5 verse 24. He said... To his disciples, he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. The eternal life would be within the person who is believing and who is alive believing, not the dead person. Okay? He does not come into judgment but has passed notice the transition notice the rapture 
Notice the harpazo. You are passed from death to life in the twinkling of an eye when you believe. <laughs> All right. So this is the key to understand concerning the kingdom of heaven today. The kingdom of heaven, the New Jerusalem, it came down from heaven in the time of the Thessalonians. It is right now existing in the air, the spiritual atmosphere of the earth because it is a spiritual kingdom. And those who are born of the spirit, as Christ said, you must be born of the spirit to see it because it's an invisible kingdom. <laughs> okay? And you must be born of the spirit to enter it. Okay? Because you have to be spirit to enter a spirit kingdom because it exists in the air, the spiritual realm of the earth. Okay? So those who are born of the spirit are immediately harpazo, snatched up, caught up, raptured from death to life and translated into this kingdom. These believers commune with the Father and the Son. They have immortality and incorruptibility already in their spirit, inside, inwardly, in the inner man. While those who are of the flesh, not born again yet, are shut out until they too are born of the Spirit. So Paul was writing to the Thessalonians and the apostolic believers to let them know that the presence of the Lord, the presence of Jesus and his Father was about to ever be with them <laughs> to usher in this new way which today we can benefit from. And so we are first resurrected in our spirit by hearing, believing, and receiving the gospel. We are born of the Lord's spirit and joined to him. The death of our bodies no longer interrupts that relationship because we are ever with him. So shall we ever be with him. Even when our mortal bodies die, we are simply harpazo into the realm of the spirit in the twinkling of an eye. Thus, the rapture, as taught by the apostles, is not an escape from the earth, <laughs> but it, is, it was an inauguration of the reign of life through the presence of God within. And so we have come to the end of this sixth and final video and of the series on a whole on the topic of the rapture and how the modern church has been left behind. I thoroughly enjoyed this study and I hope you enjoyed it also. This particular video, the sixth video was entitled How the Saints Met the Lord in the Air at the Rapture. And if you appreciate this content, please like, share and subscribe. You may support this ministry by purchasing one or both of my books or purchasing from the merchandise store. And so until next time, I'm your brother and friend, Murray Sade. May God richly bless you. This has been the New Cosmos Videocast. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, and share.